For the past couple of weeks, I wanted to give myself a bit of a reading challenge. It started from wanting to read one particular book and then I kind of had this idea of wanting to read um, the five most popular booktube slash booktalk uh, romance books. Um, I chose a particular genre. In my head, it's a particular genre and that is the illustrated cartoon illustrated romance book covers um, you've seen them around um, definitely I'll show you some of them up on the screen right now but um, yeah I kind of felt like they were becoming their own romance subgenre so I wanted to pick um, pick some of them up I chose five of the ones that I see a lot both on my um, Instagram and YouTube but also just like out and about. So the first one that I read was Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. Ah, that's really hot. This is kind of the the book that inspired me to do this um, particular challenge so I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. Um, basically this book is about a figure skater named Anastasia and a hockey player named Nathan. So something happens in the beginning of the book that prevents the hockey players from using their own ice rink and so the hockey player team, the, the hockey team and the figure skaters have to share an ice rink. So that is sort of how these two main characters meet. Um, they don't really become friends, they're sort of um, enemy. Uh, I wouldn't really say enemies, Anastasia just doesn't like Nate because um, she has heard a lot about him or like she has these uh, prejudices um, about his type I guess um, but they kind of have to run in the same circles. I didn't really feel very invested in these two characters romance just because in the beginning the whole like her hating him part of it just felt really unnecessary and like not that big of a deal and also i just the way that this book is set like it's a it's a modern contemporary kind of book right and so the characters of both anastasia and um nate are they're in their like casual dating casual hookup kind of uh phase in their life which there's nothing wrong with that but i sometimes i feel like when you make the main character um someone who is used to having like friends with benefits and doesn't want commitment because she doesn't think that she has time for a commitment and no strings no i think she says like no emotion no jealousy attached when you have that sort of a character and you and you also have the male character who does typically sort of like hook up and when you try to build a romance around that it, it didn't i think it didn't work for me because they kind of got together really early on and so the rest of the time was me waiting for them to like say i love you but even that wasn't really like it wasn't really there was no pining there was no yearning there was no like um this like suspenseful like emotion behind it because they they've already hooked up they're they're already sort of like spending a lot of time together they're already sort of friends by like the midpoint that you're you're kind of left like okay well what's the what's the point of the rest of the story and that's how i kind of felt with this book i just i didn't i didn't feel it to be that compelling of a romance like a, to me a romance is two people like kind of like finally getting together at the end and with this one i just like they they were already together by like the midpoint so i just i don't know and yes i understand that this is 
it's becoming a trend now for some reason with a lot of the newer romances that have come out where it's like a romance but then they try to fit like the kind of outside their own individual lives aspect to it which i think is a good idea because i know a lot of authors do that l kennedy even does that in her romances this one i felt like it was so marketed as a romance and there is a lot of like smart scenes and a lot of romance in it and then they tried to add the the other aspect to it like the the individual characters lives and their backstory and stuff to it to bulk up the book and i don't understand why because i don't think it's necessary i think it's necessary a little bit to give context of where the characters are coming from but i don't really care about either of their lives to be honest i go into romance books to read a romance i don't if i wanted to read a contemporary like coming of age type book i would pick up a contemporary coming of age book and so i don't need this extra stuff when it comes to just if you're gonna market it as a romance then just write a romance it, we don't need this extra stuff you know like christina lauren doesn't add too much unnecessary like she adds enough drama and tension but that drama and tension is to help the romance move along this one didn't feel like it helped the romance move along this one just felt like extra stuff does that make sense um i also didn't like that there were too many characters this is another thing that i find common in a lot of like these new sort of romance books is they have way too many characters in it and i don't i don't care like honestly i don't care about the other characters in your life i get so annoyed with like these new romances that are coming out where there's like too many characters too much of the unnecessary subplot and not enough of not enough pining honestly that's all i want in a romance i just want pining now after reading that book i kind of had this idea that i kind of wanted to rank them so i'm gonna put this towards the end the next book i picked up was you and me on vacation by emily henry or um if you want to go by the american title it's called people we meet on vacation by emily henry um i decided to pick this book up because uh the tropes were like friends to lovers and i thought i was going to enjoy it um basically let me explain to you the premise so we follow two friends like i said poppy and um alex and they met during their orientation week at university like over 10 years ago like i said so i think they're like in their early 30s now at this point and when they were in university during the summertime they would do these like cheap vacations where they just kind of like go somewhere together and just like hang out for the summer um poppy has always wanted to travel a lot like she's always wanted to write for like a travel blog or something the book uh kind of alternates between the past vacation summers and the present vacation summer so what's happening in the present is something has happened between the two of them where they haven't um spoken in about two years um poppy is a travel blogger like she's always wanted to be um so she goes on like holiday trips a lot because she kind of gets paid to do that to do them anyway so they haven't spoken in two years and which means that they haven't been on their like s annual summer vacation for two years there is a loud machinery outside so in the present summer poppy decides to reach out to alex and kind of uh give him a last minute vacation idea being like hey let's do what we used to do because i kind of you know i miss our, our vacations so i didn't quite 
like this one which again i'm really really disappointed with because here's the thing like i'm not going into these books being like i'm gonna hate all of them anyway i'm i'm honestly trying to find a good book like i'm not just kind of like being negative about all these books and i feel really bad but this one in particular i think is i would say it's a combination of beach read and uh book lovers because we get the same sort of character dynamic um that we do in beach read with january and I forgot the guy's name um where where it's like the girl is like the super quirky one and like very colorful and flighty and and kind of like doesn't really know what she wants um and then we get the like more serious more mature male character it, it kind of reminded me of like her other two books which i kind of didn't like um I think also what I didn't like about this was that there was not as much accountability um, towards the actions that Poppy made. I don't know if I said it in the synopsis, but she kind of lied to Alex about what this vacation is because she was too, um, she felt too awkward and too prideful, I guess, to admit that she really misses him. Um, and she lied about it being a work trip because it's not a work trip. Her work didn't agree to her going here. Like she's paying for the whole thing herself. But there was no, not that much, uh, like Alex didn't call her out on that. I just felt like she breezed through life a little bit too easily. And I guess... I don't know, I was just a little bit annoyed with um, with just like the, the whole reality logistic sides of things. I know I'm not supposed to like read into it in that way because it is a romance book and you know escapism and all that. I'm not into I'm not into reading about characters who are like messy and flighty and like irresponsible and um lie to get what they want kind of thing and have no consequences whatsoever um um to do with their actions i don't know i just i don't know i didn't i didn't like that when it comes to the romance um like i said again feels very very unrealistic i don't understand what they have in common yeah i think those were my main gripes towards the book this one i was once again disappointed by so i think i'm gonna put this below icebreakers by hannah grace and the reason for that is because i think not only was i disappointed by the overall story and the romance but i was also just bored whereas with icebreakers i was disappointed but it was still somewhat entertaining to read the next book I picked up was The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. Okay, I have some exciting news. I'm so happy to announce that I really enjoyed this one. To be completely honest with you, I didn't think that I would enjoy this one. I've This is like one of the more popular books on this list, obviously. And so without me even trying, I feel like I know so much about this book and I don't know, there are these rumors about like the idea behind it and stuff. And to be completely honest with you, I didn't think I would like it because of all the stuff that everyone else was saying about it. Um, but I'm so, so happy. I was so happy that I really enjoyed this one. Um, let me just explain to you the premise before I gush about it. So it we follow our two main characters. Oh, well, like it's a single POV. Um, we follow Olive, uh, who is a grad student, a PhD student um, at a university. She's a biologist, which is why I don't understand why there are like chemicals and test tubes and things like that in the background. Because I'm like, she's a biologist. She works with rats <laughs> anyway in the beginning of the book she comes up to this guy adam here 
um, and asks if she could kiss him. Um, and then we later realize that the reason why she did that is um, this whole little scheme that she's come up with uh, to make sure that her best friend sees them kissing because her, she has an inkling that her best friend is into this guy that she went on a couple of dates with and Olive doesn't really like this guy that she went on a couple of dates with um, and she was trying to convince her best friend to say that it's okay if, if, if the best friend wanted to date this guy but the best friend is like oh no 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 because you 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 went on a date with him like I like she's trying she, Olive is trying to convince the best friend that she's over that other guy and she's moved on to a different person and that's kind of where the whole kiss started anyway a couple of other things happen they end up making a deal to fake date around this uh, campus um, because he also needs to convince the faculty or something that he's not um, not leaving the university um, like he's secure like he, he's because he wants a grant or something I don't know it's a long story but that's basically the gist of the premise um, things i really like about this book i really like the relationship between the two of them it's this like very quiet subtle a lot of pining a lot of glances a lot of little like little small little actions it's that kind of a romance which i'm really really into i think hey ali hazelwood i did a really really good job in the little the little details of how they look at each other and like how they interact with each other it's just it's very sweet and it's very careful and it's very gentle and subtle and i uh i really 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 like it um the other thing i really like is that there is no um no unnecessary miscommunication in the third act if you read a lot of romance, you know that in the third act, there's always going to be some sort of uh, miscommunication that uh, will make you think that they're not going to get together, right? Um, that kind of happens, but she does it in a different way and it like makes sense to the plot, which I really like. I also, the, the speaking of the plot, I also really like that um, she made everyone in the book an important role in the overall story. I feel like a lot of romances um, that I've read, especially like like for example with Icebreakers and, um, and I think another one that I can think of is All Roads Lead Here by uh, Mariana Zapata. I think those romances um, have a lot of characters but those characters don't actually play a role in in the book you know so it just felt really really pointless whereas I feel like even though we do have a best like two best friends Olive's best friends and they do have their own like little subplots they ultimately play a role in Olive and Adam's um, plot as well so they're like useful to the overall story so I really like that about it oh that's the other thing I like that even though they have this like fake dating thing, relationship thing going on um, and there is a little bit of uh, information hiding uh, from the both of them um, when outside forces come in they are never not on the same team which i think is like i i don't see that very often in a lot of romances because a lot of the times uh the, what the drama is the way the drama is usually mixed up is that um something happens in the outside forces and then one of the characters or two of the characters get uh, like get affected by those outside forces and then they end up 
wanting to isolate themselves or wanting to not talk to the other person and so they end up not working together as a team i never felt like that with olive and adam i felt like whenever things did happen although there would be like moments where she'd be like oh i can't talk to him about that or something like that she always ends up talking to him about it and then they both work together to figure out how to fix the issue so yeah, I really, I really, really appreciate that. I think the only thing that I'm kind of um, feeling a little bit eh, about with this book is not really like, not really the book's fault. And I don't know if it's the author's fault as well, but I heard so much about um, this originally being a fan fiction or something. Like, please correct me if I'm wrong, if I heard that wrong or whatever, but I heard that this was a certain fan fiction and that really annoyed me because especially in the beginning because I was like oh well I don't want to try and imagine Adam as this person that everyone thinks is it's a fan fiction of. I don't like when my fiction books merge into like real life. I don't mind if people want to fan cast or whatever but I don't like it when people go oh this is definitely this actor or this is definitely this celebrity i also didn't like um it, it's a similar thing with icebreakers i think before even the first chapter i think there was a little note that said uh to um to enjoy this book listen to this playlist and like one of them was like cool summer by taylor swift and i'm like i don't i i I don't want you to talk about Taylor Swift while I'm like like trying to read a fiction book you know and that's kind of the same with this because everyone was saying oh this is this actor or something I don't see that anyway did the author say that because the only thing because I, I ended up I think Andrew read the author note uh, for me because I didn't want to know the information unless it was like if it was bad um but uh, andrew read the author note and he said that no she didn't say anything about that she just said that she was a part of um like the fan fiction like she's written fan fiction in the past so whether or not this was originally fan fiction i don't know and i don't really want to know because i i like to imagine olive and adam as these cartoon characters <laughs> You know, like I don't need to put an actor's face on it and maybe I'm just like not that like Visual stuff is not that important to me. Like it's not my main sense <laughs> I guess so like I don't care. I don't care what uh, What these characters look like they just their romance is just perfect in my head as you can tell by my review i really 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 enjoyed this one and i was so 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 surprised so this is definitely going on top of the list right after that i was feeling very optimistic so i picked up the spanish love deception all right so um i've been listening to um the spanish love deception by oh my god elena Armaz, don't know how you pronounce her last name, so I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, just while I've been knitting, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty far into it. I feel like I feel like I've given it. I'm almost halfway through this book. Um, it looks like, yeah, I'm. On, I think the book is like ten hours long. I'm listening to it on audio. I think the book is ten hours long, and I'm almost uh five hours into it so i feel like i've given it um a good chance and i think i've decided that i'm just going to dnf it i'm not really enjoying it there's nothing i don't hate it i'm just really bored i'm really bored i also don't like the main character catalina again this is all very subjective it's my it's my thing i i just i don't like it i've read a couple of reviews and there are some people that really really like it i don't know what it is with like um romance books and having like corporate kind of world like officey kind of um 
jobs they're always like in New York and and that kind of stuff like I it's a those kind of like plot lines in romances are very hit or miss for me and so unfortunately this one was a miss I just didn't like the way the female character um interacted or reacted to the male character I just felt like so it's it's uh it's about this um girl Catalina who is uh going to her sister's wedding in Spain in about a month but uh, she told her whole family back home that she had a boyfriend who she was going to bring to her sister's wedding because she heard from her family that her ex-boyfriend who she broke up with or like they broke up um, about six years ago is now engaged and that boyfriend that ex-boyfriend is the uh uh, best man and uh, our main character is the maid of honor so she like doesn't want to show up uh, in front of her ex-boyfriend single I guess and so she made up this whole lie about how she has a boyfriend and um, and that's kind of how the fake dating sort of thing uh, started with this the our main character a uh, male character Aaron um, Aaron also has like a bit of a deal like he also wants a fake date to something as well and that's kind of how they became doing this fake dating thing um, alongside the fake dating aspect of it um, there is also a kind of like enemies to lovers thing which is the part that I am not really enjoying i especially don't like it because i understand if it was just the fake dating but because they have that that um added element of like they don't like each other i didn't like it because you can never really you don't really see why they don't like each other it's just the main character being like oh i hate him like he's my nemesis and he doesn't like me but like it's it's a lot of it's a lot of telling and not enough showing um, and that's also like I can feel an inkling of what the romance is gonna be like as well and it feels like it's just gonna be a lot of um, a lot of telling and not showing which is like the complete opposite to the love hypothesis I think um, when I mentioned that I, I like how uh, Ali Hazelwood was more detailed in the little touches and the little glances that is a good example of showing and not telling in writing and in books and I feel like this this isn't there there's there's barely any showing and just a lot of telling in it which I'm just I'm not I'm not into so I feel like I've given it a good chance and I just yeah I don't like it so I think I'm going to DNF this one. Now, because I DNF this one, I'm going to put this below you and me on vacation. And I decided to save the most hyped book for last, and that book is Red, White, and Royal Blue. I decided to leave the biggest, most popular, most hyped book out of the five of this list that I chose um, up to the very last just because like I said it's the biggest one it's the most hyped I've seen it everywhere everyone's talked about it um, it got turned into a TV show or a movie I'm not quite sure because I haven't actually watched it I don't watch um, I don't subscribe to any streaming streaming services so I don't watch anything um, unless uh, I can find it on blu-ray or DVD <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, Red, White and Royal Blue basically follows our main character Alex, who is the son of the first female president of the United States, and we follow his romance between him and the Prince of England, Prince Henry. Um, I really like um, this romance between them. I think it was really sweet and really romantic and really gentle. I was really scared uh, going into these books because um, especially after reading Icebreakers, I was starting to think that a lot of romances that are coming out um, more recently are less um, 
less romantic in that like traditional kind of romance you know pining like thinking about each other like, like long glances that kind of stuff I was thinking that that is not something that a lot of uh, newer romance books would um, offer me but this one proved me wrong and also the love hypothesis also proved me wrong so I'm really really happy that this one was a really sweet one because I do like those sweet romances um, I think one of the, my favorite things about this book is and my favorite thing about their romance and their story is that a lot of the issues that come up have more to do with the plot um, that are like within their outside forces if that makes sense instead of it being like their internal struggle towards each other does that make sense like like a lot of the the reasons why there is an issue with them being together is not because they don't want to be together it's that they can't be together because they are the first son of the United States and the Prince of England you know so I really like that because um, like I mentioned in uh, my review of the love hypothesis because they do it do it there too with the issue between olive and adam were like outside of themselves um it makes it makes the two characters work together as a team and it, it kind of bonds them and i really i i, I really like that because i'm so sick of storylines where the issue is a miscommunication between the two love interests because that's just like that's just silly you just need to talk to each other but i never felt that way with alex and henry i felt like they were very good at communicating how they felt with each other except for the very beginning obviously but um i felt like throughout the whole thing they were very good at just working together as a team to figure out what they can do um in order to to be together so i really like that about it one thing that i don't really like about this book and this is more of a personal thing but i don't like um reading about politics <laughs> like i just i don't find it interesting when i'm trying to read a romance and politics gets involved you know like i i don't even like um those kind of rom-coms where it's like the prince of a country trying to get with like a like a like a nobody person you know like i don't even like that and so for this to be so because they're both like world leaders for this to be so political based i just i got really bored about that whole politics i'm also like not i'm not american nor am i british so like neither of those i like i really care about like i'm i'm australian so i'm like i don't know anything about about that kind of stuff so i'm i'm like i don't i just i want to read romance for escape i don't really need to um need to read about politics you know and i think the other thing that um that i kind of didn't like either and i don't know how to explain this because it the the whole book even though the characters are all different and everything like that the way it's set up is makes me feel like it's supposed to be this uh alternate universe because the main character mentions like real people like in the real world like he mentions obama he mentions the kennedys he mentions um uh like a lot of a lot of like oh i think he mentions like taylor swift as well and i think i um i said when i was talking about like icebreakers and and um and you and me on vacation and stuff like that where in the beginning of the book in icebreakers they're like oh if you want to enjoy this book listen to these songs and they're like real life songs i don't like when my fiction feels like it's blending into the real world again um it's kind of like with the politics like i'm i read romance to escape i read it to be in you know in the book world i don't really like it when someone reminds me that this is not this is like happening in the real world 
Does that make sense? Like I just, I, I wish I, I don't know how else she could have done it though because I, I understand what she was trying to do um, with the, the setup, but I just, I, I wish she would have just maybe like given it a different kind like instead of just like having America and the UK I wish you would have just like given it a different a different like um a different country name maybe like maybe change all the countries um and then not mention like mention someone like Obama or someone like the Kennedys but not actually use their names I don't know I just that kind of takes me out of the story a little bit so yeah but like I came into it for the romance and I enjoyed the romance enough so now this one's a little bit hard to rank because I really liked the romance I thought it was really sweet but I didn't like the overall world and the plot of it like the politics side of it so I can't really decide if I want to put it above or below icebreakers. I think I'm going to put it below the life hypothe love hypothesis and above icebreakers. So I think overall I was really happy with this little reading challenge that I gave myself. I'm really really happy that I found a new favorite romance basically so that's really good. Um, let me know if you enjoyed this kind of video and I'll do a little bit more. I think I want to do maybe something along the lines of reading the uh, the sports romances that have been going around. I know that um, L. Kennedy has been writing sports romances for a while so I've read a couple of her books but um, I know that there are a lot of other sort of sports romance books out there. Let me know um, if you have any recommendations uh, down in the comments below and yeah I'll see you next time.